My name is Professor Joseph Wunderlich, and uh, this is a lecture on Amdahl's Law in computing. Amdahl's Law is uh, essentially the law of diminishing marginal returns that you find in other disciplines, uh, namely in, in economics you'll see it where you get a little bit less for every little bit of effort you put in as you progress and put more effort in. So uh, in computing terms, um, the speed up in computer performance, you're always trying to speed up the computer with different measures uh, that we've talked about a little bit in other lectures. Um, in a measured way, you're trying to, to speed the computer up However, you get less and less benefit for each uh, little bit of effort you put in. In quantitative terms, we have an example here. So uh, suppose you have a computer um, and you have an old amount of time uh, to execute some code prior to implementing some new speed up feature. And then you have a new time. And so the speed up is the old over the new. And um, so yes, the, the t sub new is the time to execute the code after the implementation of a new uh, speed up measure and performance. And so t new is the, equal to two things, the, uh, uh, the part that benefits, uh, the, uh, uh, the part that benefits and the part that does, uh, does not. So uh, t sub benefit is the new time to execute the part of the code that benefits from the new feature and then uh, the time to do everything else. So for example, we'll plug in some numbers. So suppose we have a computer that has uh, a code segment that takes 100 milliseconds to execute and uh, uh, you have some new hardware feature. Uh, so this is a new arithmetic logic unit and a new ALU could increase the performance of 40% of that code by 10 times. So only a part of it's getting sped up. So what is the potential speed up of the entire computer? So before we did anything uh, new, we had 100 milliseconds to uh, execute the code and then the part of that that benefits is uh, um, increased by uh, or decreased by 10. That's why you're dividing by 10 there. So 40% of the code is 10 times faster, say it takes a tenth as long. That's why you're dividing 100 milliseconds by 10. And so you get four uh, milliseconds for the part that's benefiting, which is faster. You reduce that time, and then 60% of the code is still um, going at the 100 millisecond uh, uh, benchmark we had for the everything before we did anything. And so we have 60 milliseconds contributing for T other. So you add them together, and the T new is the benefit plus the uh, other, and we get uh, 4 plus 60 equals 64. And then we plug into the speed up, uh, the old over the new. So it took 100 milliseconds before, and now we're dividing by a smaller number, so we're going to speed up. So you know, we're, we had a longer time is t old, a newer time is, is faster, and we divide the old by the new, and we get a 1.56. So you can imagine if there was no benefit at all, then it'd be you know, t new would be the same as t old, and then you just have a 1, so there's no speed up. So you want to have this number be as, uh, as big as possible. So 1.56 is your speed up. Uh, notice it's not a 2, so we're not doubling the speed. Um, and then when we look at a graph of this, we see uh, Amdahl's Law, where you have the percentage of code benefiting from a new feature. And... Um, you see the speed up of the computer on the y-axis and uh, the increase in performance of part of the computer due to the new feature on the x-axis. 
and then you have different curves. So the first curve is you have a hundred percent speed up. So uh, you could see that uh, you, know, you do do uh, uh, you, you get twice as much speed um, for the uh, amount you're putting in. Uh, it's it's a linear curve uh, you know, at a 45 degree angle is the the maximum that you're going to get. But then you get a curve that drops off more and more if you have a smaller part of the code that actually benefits as you would expect. And then you can apply the same principle to the number of processors. So this is the same example, but it's showing that the number of processors uh, is not going to give you uh, a double speed up uh, unless you have 100% and alpha equals 100% where you're utilizing both of them um, which we'll see in other courses that it's impossible really to get that because you have interprocessor communication you have some overhead so if you have a problem uh, you're starting up the computer and then you parse the computer and you put it on the different processors or different cores you're gonna have to communicate the answers back uh, you know, share data between the different uh, cores at different times. So you're never going to get this 100% speed up, and that's the whole uh, point of this uh, exercise. However, we're going to see that there is possibly a way of uh, of uh, breaking Amdahl's law where you can get more. So we'll see that in a second. But just understanding Amdahl's law is the first thing, and that states that uh, as we saw you know, with a code segment, a certain percentage of the code only speeds up and the other part doesn't. And in this case, for this particular example, we have on the x-axis number of processors or cores, and you're typically going to have an alpha that's not 100%. You're going to have something else because you're typically going to have, as I mentioned, in a process of communication and over overhead, other overhead costs. So that's the essence of Amdahl's law.